found this tree. There are a ton of crappie stacked up on it. That's a good one. That's a... <laughs> that is a good white crappie. Welcome back to another one. Today we're talking about early fall fishing. It's mid-September right now. One of my favorite rigs to use during the fall is a double jig setup. So first I'm gonna explain how to tie this thing on real quick. And then I actually found a tree on the river that hasn't been here for the past couple weeks and it is absolutely loaded with crappie. So I'm gonna show you what my side imaging settings are and how I found it. And then we're gonna actually start catching some fish. All right, for our double jig setup, I got my two jigs here. These are ACC crappie sticks jigs. Um, eighth ounce jig, one sixteenth ounce jig. You can either do the same size jig head, or if you're gonna go with a lighter jig, make sure the lighter jig goes on top. So we're gonna put our first jig, which is our light jig, through the line. All right, there's jig head number one. Just gonna slide it up the line for now. And then jig head number two, put that on the line. And there's a couple different knots you could tie, Palomar knot, uh, improved clinch knot or a simple knot is just a loop knot. You're going to double your tag end over with your main line. You're going to pinch it together with both hands, just like this. And then you're going to flip that jig over one time. It's going to create this loop in my right hand here. You're going to put your jig head right through that loop. All the way through it. Now we've got a little bit of a Kind of an overhand knot, wet it, and then just slowly cinch it down. And then make sure you cut your tag end. You can adjust, if you don't want as big as a loop as this, you can adjust it down before you pull it tight, um, simply by pulling your tag end or the main line to create a little bit smaller loop if that size of loop isn't what you want. But uh, for right now, that's gonna work for me. Now the next jig, which is your top jig that we just sl slid down, I'm going to leave this about, I don't know, eight inches above my, my bottom jig. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to pinch the line together. Leave it hang a little bit. Flip it over once. And it creates that loop right there. And you're going to put your jig head right through it. Kind of slowly pinch this together. Wet it. And then you can pull it tight. And there we go. We have our double jig setup tied on. Now let's talk about baits. So these are the Crappie Monster Small Fries. Uh, minnow pattern. This time of year, a lot of these crappie are feeding up on big schools of bait fish. So trying to replicate that. Typically the two that I like to use, more of the natural patterns, which is your Monster Milk at the top, your Margarita the second from the top. Or if you want to go to more of a chartreuse pattern, um, you got your fried apple, which is a black and chartreuse, and then this is your chartreuse and pearl on the bottom. So right now we're going to just try one of each, tie it on, and uh, see which we can get the crappie to bite on. So I, this stump is just sticking out of the water. I actually almost ran into it when I was trying to idle kind of through here looking for any piece of lay down or something that's new. Uh, we've had rainstorms the past few weeks, and typically that usually means some pieces of driftwood get into the main current or main channel and they get pushed aside somewhere along this edge. And so we're going to go side imaging on the right side of this. It's going to come up on the right side of the side imaging here. And uh, then I'll turn around and show you on the left side. But there are a ton of fish stacked up on it. They're real close to it though. It's not like they're really suspended out in front of it. But there's the big tree and it's right underneath that black area right underneath the beam and then you can see the big shadow in the gold area. Let me zoom in here. You can see all the fish right next to it. I'm going to pause it here for you. You can see these fish just holding real close, real tight to all of this. So I'm going to turn around now and uh, we'll show you the left side of the screen and kind of what it looks like. But side imaging settings, typically I'm running 70 feet left and right. Um, I run pretty much default settings on a lot of this stuff. You know, contrast, I usually run a little bit lower on this river system, typically because after fresh rains, there's a lot of sediment in the water. So I'll, I'll tone that down a little bit, but as you can see, brightness, I got it on auto medium. Um, auto medium or auto low, either one works great. Um, running the, the megahertz or the ultra HD 
frequency. And I don't really, I don't really change much when I'm running this, even from lake to lake. The only thing I'll probably adjust is the contrast if there's a lot of sediment in the water. Right now on the right side of the screen, you can see, or it's just across the right side of the line, there's a lot of bubbles. That's from the motor, that's what that is, coming back this way. Since I turned around and went back into it, that's just all the bubbles from the propeller kicking up. Okay, now that tree's gonna come up on the left side of the screen here. Probably don't need to get too close to it, but. And you can see far off the left side, there's a hard bottom. That's that brighter bottom, and it transitions to a softer, kind of mud silt bottom. But there is the tree, so we can get a good look at what's really on it. And there are a ton of fish, and it's not only crappie. I've, I mean, there's, I'm sure there's like smallmouth and walleye and catfish, whole different food chain. The entire food chain is probably stacked up in there on that tree. And uh, to pinch the screen, you're just using, like you're using Google Maps, just kind of pinch it and you get this zoom function. I'm gonna pause it here. And you can zoom in and you can really pick apart. Okay, there's the main part of the tree and then there's fish just stacked above it. Now, that tree is actually arced downstream. So the curve of that tree is downstream, okay? Those fish, if you notice, most of those fish are on the, the bottom side of that arc because they're sitting where the current break is. So this tree is actually creating a nice current break through these fish, and uh, that's why they're using it. So that's kind of why those fish are set up that way. So there you have it, there's our tree. How I found it, it's just sticking up out of, out of the water. Not something we typically find this far north. You know, on, your rivers, on the big reservoir systems down south, you do find a lot of timber like that up north. Typically don't see it unless it's in the early springtime or you just got a bunch of rain and it pushed a piece of driftwood like this into the river. So now that we found it, let's go set up and start fishing on it. There he is. Whew. He was really high up in the water column. This is not the river crappie we want, but it's a good start for the day. How far he buried that down? Not in his gullet, so he'll be all right. But, see, you, bud. So I'm just slowly pitching this jig and basically swinging these jigs down the log, down this tree, back to the boat. There he is. Crop just came off that log. I mean, this would be a decent eater. There's no size limit. I'm looking for those. 13, 14 inch fish that I know they're on this river system that I'm fishing today. This is a very rare opportunity to fish a vertical piece of timber this far north. Usually this is something you see on the big reservoir systems. Thump. Gosh, that's such a good feeling. That's a little bit better one. Oh, come here, bud. There we go. That guy's probably gonna push 11, throw him on the, on the bump board. Oh yeah, just over 11 right there. He's gonna go in the box. Now I recently got this seven foot one piece that ACC came out with. It's got the super grip. Um, the cool thing they did with this is they actually expanded the eyelets to the back to the, uh, the big size. So you can use this as a slip bobber rod and those slip stops will fly right through here, no problem. But it's a super sensitive one piece. And uh, this one I got set up with the 2000 size Viper X reel with six pound mono. Uh, for the double jig setup. I also have another one set up with same same reel, but it's a 10 pound braid with an eight pound fluorocarbon leader. And that one I actually use for walleye. You can probably go up to even, I've been using like quarter ounce jigs for walleye. You could probably even push it to like a three eight and, uh, and still have enough backbone to really pop that jig off the sand or whatever you're fishing on. Uh, I've caught a few walleye with this already. There he is. That thump feels so good. Ooh, this is a better one. That's a better fish. He's a fat one. I mean, that's probably another. Uh, he's a 10 and a half. I'm going to let him go, but it's a fat 10 and a half. Got some decent shoulders on him. See you, buddy. Oh, there he is. I didn't even feel him. It's another white crappie. That's two in a row that that bite was so soft. And it's not because uh, it's a super soft bite. Like, look at that. He choked on it. 
just must have ran up the water column at it. And it was so aggressive that I actually just pulled the line straight up and I wasn't even noticing. I would love to catch like a two pounder of these up north because these, these white crappie tend to get a lot bigger than the black crappie, just in general. Oh, there he is. That was a thump. Another white crappie. This one's a little bigger. I do miss going down south and catching some monster white crappie. That is one thing I did not get to do this year. Next winter or late winter, springtime, I do have a couple of trips planned. Go down south and catch hopefully some two to three pounders. There he is. I think it's another white crappie, but the, oh no, nope. black crappie. It's another decent fish. Yeah, he's an 11. I'm gonna keep him. Anything over 12, I'll let go, but I wanna keep a few 11 inch fish. Still after that, I know there's a couple big ones down there. I've seen them move in the base of this tree. We're gonna catch them. There he is. This is a good fish. That's a good white, that's a, <laughs> that is a good white crappie. That, that might be pushing, it's pushing 12. Oh yeah. <laughs> 12 and a half inch white crappie. Not what I was expecting today on the river. Not what I was expecting at all. So there you have it. Nice white crappie for up north, uh, just over 12 inches. Um, we really don't catch a ton of these except for on the river systems, Mississippi River, St. Croix. This is pretty much the furthest north that you can actually find them. Double jig setup. This is my go-to fall setup. Check out ACC Crappie Sticks, the brand new seven foot one piece. It's a great rod. I use it both for crappie, smallmouth, and walleye. Rod tip is sensitive enough to feel a light crappie bite, but it's got enough backbone if you want to throw a quarter ounce jig head or a little bit heavier for some walleye for smallmouth this fall. Highly recommend this rod. Running the 2000 size PC Fun Viper X reel. Uh, right now, six pound mono. If you're going for more of a multi-species setup, I'd probably go 10 pound braid, eight pound fluorocarbon leader but double jig setup, great way to catch them in the fall. Check out Crappie Monster. If you want a pack of these Crappie Monster small fry, go to OTHfishing.com, save 20% off the entire website, use promo code Davis for 20% off. Don't pay full retail. Fall fishing is getting started. Hopefully you're getting time out on the water and catching a ton of fish. If you got any comments or questions on any of the setup or how I found these fish with side imaging, live scope, anything like that, post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. Good luck on the water this fall. Hopefully you're catching a ton of crappie.